Good morning. We'll uh, shift over to weather and talk about uh, well, a couple couple themes, a little bit of uh, new news here, but we are actually looking for some changes coming up in the next uh, week regarding temperature that probably a lot will uh, a lot of you will find uh, uh, welcoming given a, a really really warm week that we've been through. Uh, I mean, I'll start there with the means for the last week, the temperatures here were much above normal, especially at night time during the last week. I think everyone can appreciate that. It was a, a sultry uh, and, and just a very, very uncomfortable type of week. But our, our means for the week range from uh, three or four degrees Fahrenheit above normal in the far southeast and northwestern part of the state to more than uh, eight degrees Fahrenheit, so way above. That's a fairly large departure for the week. And really, I think uh, for, for some parts of the state, more importantly, uh, on the right-hand side here, these are rainfall totals through yesterday morning, but we had with the most recent rainfalls uh, in, in the lower peninsula here that fell on uh, on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, significant rain in some areas that really, really needed uh, the rain. And you can see uh, the yellows here are two inches or greater. The dark greens are at least an inch. So we had, uh, again, across central lower Michigan, we had fairly widespread one to two inch rains. And that's, that's the, is, there has been one of the driest areas of the state and one uh, that, especially given where it's certainly soybeans, but uh, our, 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 our annual crops here really, uh, really needed the water, and so that that was the most that's the most widespread rain we've seen in, in certainly in East Central Michigan in a, a few months. Uh, but big, big change. But there still are areas uh, in blue here that had less or significantly less, and that's been a an issue all year with spotty precipitation. But uh, there were areas across the southern and the northeastern lower, but in, uh, especially the southern lower that were missed and had less than, some cases, less than a quarter of an inch. Uh, and and there are still areas that are unfavorably or, or too dry for this time of the year. Our degree day totals, look, thinking about that warm week, are not surprisingly uh, surplus or above normal uh, in virtually all of the state, uh, not all, but pretty close. Uh, the numbers here, the, and these, uh, note, these are totals that go back to, I'm using now the seasonal uh, value from the beginning of March up through uh, this, this week. And those numbers range from about 1,100. These are base 50 Fahrenheit in the far north to uh, almost 2,200 down in the far south. Uh, on the right-hand side here, how do those totals compare versus normal? Well, the reds are surpluses or ahead of, of, of normal or above normal, and the blues are are the opposite. But we've got a little bit of uh, of the, the upper peninsula that's still uh, lagging uh, or just a little bit behind in terms of deficits. But given a couple of warmer than normal weeks that we've had here recently, uh, most of the state has a, a, a very, well, significant surplus, especially the southern half of lower Michigan. And you can see there expressed in calendar days, uh, most cases, at least one to two weeks, calendar weeks ahead of normal. So again, uh, surplus degree days are very likely going to be with us for the remainder of the season. Uh, next week, I, I'll, I will uh, I'll show some applications or some, uh, I guess, implications of that. But what it essentially means is our crop is going to probably, uh, certainly for corn, be done ahead of where it typically is. And the risk of, uh, of any kind of a frost or freeze is certainly less than it would be in uh, in a well in a typical season, uh, but that 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 definitely will be true though. Uh, I think this year with surpluses likely to re remain. Now a, a couple of other things too. Going back to the issue with moisture and looking at uh, Michigan, it is uh, I think it's worth noting here has been somewhat different uh, contrasted much of the Corn Belt region this year. And I, that's why I'm showing the, the regional, the upper Midwest here. These are percentiles of, of, of a rain-fed uh, system, looking at the top three feet of the soil profile. And uh, the blues here are surpluses or above normal levels. And then the browns and the reds and yellows are all deficits. And what you can see fairly clearly is that much of the, of the Corn Belt, especially the central Corn Belt here, uh, some uh, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, and then actually up into 
the uh, the, the northern plains. Lots of blues uh, indicating again surplus or or above normal moisture for this time of the year. Whereas Michigan, you can see the we've got a lot of percentiles down less than twenty five percent, especially across central and southwestern Lower Michigan. That's been where we've we've been most concerned about the dryness, and it still continues. We again, luckily, we had some some uh, beneficial rains here recently, but it's still relative to climatology drier than it typically is. Uh, USDA, the National Ag Statistics Service, came out with its. Uh, objective survey here uh, just uh, earlier this week. And uh, again, what based on what you've just seen, I guess we'll start with a condition here of our corn crop. And that's on the bottom in the middle here, that, that red, that's the current year. And right now, at least based on those conditions or crop conditions, uh, this year's crop is ahead of anything that we've seen for some time, certainly for the last several years, but even beyond that. So right now, again, with that, uh, with those moisture conditions. And given that the vast majority of the corn crop has now gone through uh, silking and pollination and has pollinated, there, there were problems with, uh, with tassel wrap, as I think we, we all know. But uh, even taking those into account, uh, things look really, really good uh, across much of the corn belt. Not as much in Michigan. Uh, and and uh, well, overall, if we put all the numbers together, USDA, uh, I think, probably surprised a little bit here and came out with a new national estimate of over 188 bushels per acre for national yield, which would be uh, a new a new record. And that's in the upper right hand side here, as you can see. So that went above and beyond what most of uh, the, the industry analysts had come up with. But again, re a reflection of very, very favorable conditions across much of the upper Midwest. On the upper left-hand side here by state, it's interesting to note, Michigan is really the only state other than if North Dakota uh, that does not have a, a, an increase in yield relative to last year. You can see Michigan's yields projected right now. Again, this is for the August estimate at 180 bushels per acre, uh, which is just down a little less than 1% from last year. But the other piece of this, again, the, the message here, I think overall, look at uh, look at states to our into the, the central corn belt, uh, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, those are all records, record highs. And again, reflect very, very favorable weather and growing season conditions here. Also, certainly reflect a high, uh, the high planted acreage that's uh, of corn that's also out there as well. Now, I also want to just throw in here as well, we uh, looking at both uh, our wheat crop and our soybean crop, and that's a, a little bit different story. And for wheat, you can see that the current number here for the crop, which has mostly been harvested now uh, and out of the field, uh, up to 91 bushels per acre, 2.2% uh, above last year, and that's a new record for, uh, for, for Michigan. Similarly, but for the soybean crop, which is still out there, uh, you can see that the current estimate is at 52 bushels per acre, which is more than 6% above last year. And if it if it did hold uh, going through the rest of the season here, would also be a new record. So uh, the, definitely I one of the messages here, uh, certainly having additional rainfall, and especially in those dry areas, would really still make a difference here. And I think that's what this survey reflects. So still very, very good prospects for the soybean crop. Uh, are still positive uh, for many areas, uh, but we do have Michigan. We have had problems in some areas with with long term persistent dryness, and that that continues. But it's it's uh, hopefully hopefully can improve. Given well, we'll look at the forecast here in, in just a moment. Uh, starting with our our weather map here this morning, looking ahead, high pressure over uh, Ontario and over uh, really over the Great Lakes region here. That's the major controller for the next 24 to 36 hours. So we've got a, a really a beautiful day in, in, uh, in store here for most of the state. High temperatures from the mid and upper 70s in the north to the low 80s in the south, uh, sunny skies, and, and relatively low humidity. It's again, it's a Canadian 
uh, origin ear mass, uh, just very, very uh, nice conditions. One, one little fly in the ointment, uh, we've got a little bit of smoke uh, once again to deal with. But other than that, uh, a, a very, very nice, nice summer day here. A couple degrees warmer than that, though, by tomorrow. Or, or let me, I forgot my current conditions. Even though there's very little to look at on this map, we've, we've got uh, uh, mostly uh, fair skies across the state with temperatures from The, even some, uh, you can see even some 40s up in the Upper Peninsula, but mostly uh, 50s and 60s in most areas. So a really nice start to the morning. Uh, very little precipitation over the last 24 hours, just a couple spotty showers in the far south, but virtually not much of anything to talk about on the mat because of that high pressure. I mentioned uh, a little bit of haze out there, especially across the northern lower peninsula. This is the current smoke Uh, integrated smoke content of the atmosphere. And uh, again, the, the, we have some elevated levels, again, mostly across northern lower Michigan. Uh, and that is courtesy of the Canadian fires. Note, though, out in the southwest, we have quite a bit of quite a bit of smoke content in, in the southwest. Those are American fires, so domestic uh, production here. But right now, we are being influenced by what's coming from north of the border, uh, coming down northwest to southeast. So it will be a little bit still some haze, but not as not as bad or not as noticeable as what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. So the, the concentrations aren't particularly high, but you will notice, again, hazier than uh, normal conditions. By tomorrow morning, Here's the weather map. The high pressure slides off to the east, and we see another weather system off to our west. That's the next one to influence us. That one is going to really take its time, and, and we've seen this pattern uh, over and over here during this growing season. There's a, a, a large uh, elongated ridge, upper air ridge across the U.S., and, and Michigan's near just south of that in the uh, sort of a, in a northwest to southeast type of flow, and there's a lot of moisture available Uh, from the south, and so the combination of these leads to these frontal systems that move through periodically, very slowly, but but serve as a mechanism to focus showers and thunderstorms, and that's that's what we're, we're going to be looking at here. Starting overnight Friday into Saturday, we'll we'll see the threat uh, begin in in western Upper Michigan again by late tomorrow, and then gradually spread south and east overnight uh, into Saturday into the northern lower, and then Saturday night and Sunday. Uh, down into the southern part of, of Lower Michigan. So a very, again, slow movement of this, but uh, that's a, that's really the next major weather system or next chance for significant precip that we'll be looking at. Here's the map on Saturday morning, and you can see that front does uh, get a little closer here, that system with uh, the dark greens here indicating a higher chance of rain. Now, one, uh, one theme here too that you'll also probably pick up a little bit from the last couple of images here, best chances for rainfall coming up in the next several days will be across northern parts of the state and then decrease as one goes south. We, we've seen that a lot uh, during this growing season. This this week probably will be like that. Uh, but it, what it points or leads to here, essentially with the very, very slow movement of this, there'll be almost a daily chance or threat of at least scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, for the latter part of the weekend for much of the state and then even to, to next Monday and Tuesday as well. Uh, The precip totals for the week, this is a, there's a lot of color on this map here, uh, including some reds here, which indicate more than two inches. I, I think this is maybe is a little aggressive, but remember that this is the this is precipitation potential. It doesn't mean that's what's going to, but uh, it, it does suggest possibly some heavy rain in the north. And a lot of that is because our humidity levels, the amount of, uh, of uh, water vapor available here will be fairly high once again, especially once we get to the weekend and into early next week. And there will be a relatively, uh, well, lengthy chance, uh, more than one risk for uh, for showers and thunderstorms. But uh, you can see that uh, once again, northern parts of the state is where we have the highest totals. It decreases to less than an inch once we get down to the far southern part of the state for potential. But I think that that pattern, that spatial pattern, will hold out. But these uh, these totals are 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 pretty pretty high. Uh, we'll, we'll see if I, I I my personal guess is we will not see uh, most areas seeing that kind of precipitation. But uh, still, northern parts of the state will see more more spatial coverage and higher totals. In terms of water demand. We will be looking at uh, the other the other news here, and I, I started with this, so talked a little bit about this. The other news is that after 
some pretty hot weather here expected once again this weekend. We'll see high temperatures up uh, above 90 once again on Saturday and probably on Sunday as well. But it's it looks like a temporary, before that front comes through, a temporary type of situation. Lows, lows from the 50s and low 60s back up into the 60s once again this weekend. But beginning of next week, after that front slides through, we should see, again, Canadian air move into the state, and we will be looking at cooler temperatures. So next week, high temperatures in many cases will stay uh, probably even in the 70s. So it'll be one of the cooler weeks that we've had for some time, uh, Some probably some low 80s, but, but certainly uh, at or maybe slightly even below normal uh, for a change. So the question is, how long does that, that cooler pattern last or persist? Uh, and at least right now, it, it suggests that it'll be around here for at least a week. Uh, both our 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks, you see the 6 to 10 here. If we look at that upper air pattern, notice that that big ridge, the, the axis of that is really still out west over the high plains and even over the Rockies. And that leaves us once again in northwesterly uh, flow aloft. And that's why we're seeing some of this Canadian air and and probably with it more more smoke from the wildfires, but uh, maybe most importantly, it does look like, at least right now, that that would mean near to below normal temperatures or a week of, of a little bit cooler weather, also possibly a little drier than normal. So fewer chances for precip than what we're looking at here, at least in the, the, the near-term future. 8 to 14 day time frame is very similar to this, but I would note that most of the other guidance then does suggest that warmer the normal weather returns. So we haven't seen the last of that. And yes, we have degree day surpluses and so forth, but uh, the, the warmer weather, the warmer conditions probably will return but by the end of the month. That would be the, the guess right now. And so uh, summarizing here again, uh, fairly, well, a beautiful day today with a gradual warming trend of the weekend, hot and humid, and then that next long weather system really taking its time to get through the state with almost a daily chance for precip uh, for the last part of the weekend into early next week. Uh, but cooler weather in store uh, coming up here for a good chunk of next week.